that every broken heart would be mended and made whole. And every person struggling, going through pain, guilt, shame, loss, grief, trials, temptation, would be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. I praise you. And Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. Oh God, my strength and my redeemer in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every believer say amen. And amen. Come on and give God the glory. Come on, we can do better than that. Give God some glory this morning. Give God some glory. Do me a favor. Greet seven people. Tell them good morning. Great to see you. Greet seven people. Tell them good morning. Great to see you. Good morning. Great to see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We certainly thank God uh, this morning. But this is the day that he has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on and give God the praise if you don't mind. Let's give God the glory. He's awesome. He's awesome. Listen, if you know God, it's been good to you. You know God has been good to you. Why don't you stand up and give him a praise real quick? Come on, give God the praise real quick. Give God the praise. Come on. If you only if you know he's been good. No music, no music, no music. We ain't gonna pop him. Only if you know he's been good to you. No music, no, no music. If you know God's been good to you. If he's brought you through some tests, if you've made it through some trials, if you've got a testimony, if you know this is not the end of your story, if you've got, you know God's working on the inside. I stopped by today for the one. Whoever that one is, I want you to know God's not through with you yet. If you're that one, all he needs is one. One. Are you that one? Are you that one? Worship should be a way of life for you and praise is who you are. You ought to bless God at all times and give him all the glory. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's been good to you. God's been so good to you. He's been so good to you that you ought to just say thank you. And you ought to thank him every day. 
I want everybody to pull out your phone. Pull out your phone. Just pull out your phone. And I want you to set a reminder every day at 1 p.m. to praise the Lord. Every day, 1 p.m., just set it. Set it for 1 p.m. And what I want you to do is every day at 1 p.m., set a reminder for every day at 1 p.m. to give God a praise just like that. Every day. Every day. Just go ahead and set it in your mind. Whether you're streaming live or whether you're here with us in person, I want to say welcome. We're going to have a praise party today. Let's praise the Lord. Go ahead, put it in your, put it in your device every day. Put it in my calendar. I need it in my calendar. Put it in there every day to praise God. It's crazy that you got to set yourself a reminder. It ought to be a way of life as good as God has been to you. As amazing as God has been to you and as much as he's brought you through, it should be automatic. Somebody ought to be slipping into a praise right now because you know who God's been to you. You know how amazing God has been to you. When you thought it was over, and not only did you think it was over, it looked like it was over. Other people declared over your life, it is over for you. But God found a way to bring you through over and over again. And again, and again. Sometimes we struggle to give it to him. Sometimes we struggle to give it to him, but I declare today he's still worthy. I'm gonna say that one more time. Sometimes we struggle to give him glory, but he's still worthy. I'm gonna labor with you for a minute. And we're gonna push, we're gonna push into this thing. Because God requires and desires your praise. So we're gonna take a moment. And whoever can muster up the strength, I want you to get up on your feet. If you can muster up the strength, get up on your feet. And I want you to count your blessings right now and give God praise for every single one of them. I don't care if you start with your hearing, your eyesight, the activity of your limbs, the breath in your lungs, your house, your car, your job. black out everything and just give God all the glory. All of it. He deserves it all. He deserves it all. Just tell him, Lord, you deserve it. You guys are done counting your blessings already. That's all the blessings you got? You got more blessings than that, I promise you. You got more blessings than that, I promise you. You got more than that. You got more than that. Listen, if you know God has been good to you, you don't need a preacher to pump you. You don't need a praise team to prime you. All you need is an opportunity 
to express your gratitude. And today, someone, this is your upgrade. Today, someone, this is your healing. This is your deliverance. This is your breakthrough. And you can't afford to sit there and let this moment pass you by. You can't sit there. You can't afford to allow this to be a casual moment. You've got to grab this moment and you've got to maximize it and optimize it and give God the glory because he is worthy. Somebody's warming up. Do me a favor. Take a moment. I want you to narrow your focus. Narrow your focus. Don't worry about what's happening anywhere else. Don't even worry about what's happening beside you. Don't even worry about me. Just get into that secret place and give God the glory. I promise you, there's a healing in that place. There's a deliverance in that place. There's a miracle in the presence of God. If you can get to it, it's right under your nose. I promise you. Sometimes you got to take a moment and declare, peace is mine, joy is mine. Someone ought to just let God know, God, I receive my next place. I'm on my way. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm healed. I am set free. He whom the Son is set free is free indeed. I declare your freedom. I declare your wholeness. I declare your breakthrough. You ought to receive it. Flow, y'all stay right there. Stay right there where you are. Stay in worship. Stay in a worshipful posture. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Everything you need is on the inside of you. Somebody's looking for money in a, in a promotion or in a bank account. Your money's not in your bank account. Your money is in your mind. You're looking for healing to come from a doctor. I can't, I'm here to tell you, your healing comes from the inside of you. You're already healed in Jesus' name. What if I told you not only are you healed, what if I told you the reason God healed you is so you could be healing? You represent somebody's peace. You represent someone's joy. You represent someone's salvation. You represent someone's breakthrough. You are that door. You represent the door. You're not called just to open a door or walk into a door. You're called to be a door. You're a conduit of blessing for many. For the masses, for the masses. You ought to receive it. 
No longer are you broken. No, no longer are you going to cry yourself to sleep at night. No longer are you going to want what other people have that you think you should have when you've got everything God wants you to have and everything you could ever need is on the inside of you. No longer will you complain about where you are. You will take advantage of the opportunity that exists only where you live. You're the answer. You're looking for answers and you are the answer. You are the solution. You've already passed everybody you're looking to listen to and you're still listening to them and they aren't even where they're supposed to be. And you're looking at them and listening to them and they have nothing figured out. And God's given you everything you need to succeed on the inside and you're still listening and you're still looking and you're still hoping when God has given you a conviction. You've got a conviction. I'm gonna flow with you real quick. I'm gonna flow with you. I'm gonna flow with you real quick. And I want you to hear me. Stay where you are. Don't go back to don't go back to religion. Don't go sitting down because I'm talking. Don't do that. I want you to hear me. Consider it pure joy when you in, when you face various trials or trials of many kinds because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. Do me a favor, look at someone next to you and tell them, when this is over, you won't be lacking anything. I dare you to shout for your completion right there. Shout for your, shout for your wholeness in Jesus' name. This one didn't come to break you, this one came to make you. You won't be lacking anything. I'm gonna say it one more time. You won't be lacking anything. You won't be lacking anything. Someone say, I will be lacking nothing. Somebody say, I'm here for my upgrade. Say it again, I'm here for my upgrade. God, download my upgrade. I receive it. You got to be in a worshipful posture to receive your upgrade. Someone say, I'll never complain again. Ah, that's my upgrade. I dare you to receive it. No, you better say it like you mean it. I, ne I won't, I won't, I won't. I'm embracing every problem I've got. Every problem, I'm embracing it. Someone say, I'm embracing every error I've made, every error someone else has made, every error that can be made. I embrace it because I realize that glitches, glitches come with this. I've got some glitches, but I'm still giving you the glory. I've got some challenges, but I've still got my joy. Somebody knows that joy isn't a result of everything going right. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit and no matter what I'm dealing with, I still got extreme joy because the problem that came is a problem for some. What my upgrade tells me, my problem is an opportunity. It's an opportunity. I give God the glory because my glitches, y'all don't hear me, my glitches, what might seem like a glitch to someone else, for me is an opportunity for an upgrade. Somebody shout, I might have been glitching last time you met me, but I'm going for my upgrade. I know God has more in store for me than glitches. Some of you got glitchy people around you. God says in this next chapter, he's cleaning your slate. Your upgrade comes with no bugs, no glitches. You better say, thank you, Lord. I'm going for my upgrade. Going for my upgrade. My upgrade comes with faith, not doubt. My upgrade comes with peace, 
not sorrow. Someone say, I'll have peace at all times. My upgrade comes with praise in the midst of my problem. I'll praise him. Somebody shout, I'll praise him. My upgrade says that when the problem comes, I'm not going to break down. I'm going to come up and give him glory. Let me see, let me see. Who's got their upgrade in here today? I'll know you've got your upgrade because you don't have problems. All you have is a bunch of opportunities. Somebody say, I'm trading in my complaining and I'm replacing it with praise. That's my upgrade. Your upgrade, you're walking by faith and not by doubt. Say, I'm walking by faith. Here's your upgrade, I'm walking in the spirit. That means no matter what you say to me, I give God all the glory. No matter whether you come or whether you go, no matter whether you like me or you dislike me, no matter what you do, you can come, go, stay, leave, you can do whatever you want. You can be up or down, hot or cold. I will bless the Lord at all times. It's my upgrade, it's my upgrade. My upgrade means that I can love the unlovely. Upgrade means when they scream at you, you show them love and compassion. I've been upgrading. We don't live down there anymore. We live in a mature place. So when people try to hurt you and they try to revile you and people say all oh, men are evil against you, you don't fight fire with fire. You fight fire with water. want to drive somebody crazy, let them do everything they can. And you keep on smiling. And you keep on serving. And you still keep on loving. People don't understand the hell you've been through. That's why they don't think it takes all of that to be who you are. But if they understood who God was in your life, they wouldn't question why you do what you do, how you do. Because if it has not been for the law, hey, God has been good to me. I need somebody with a real anointing to look down your row and say, pardon me, but I'm about to turn this whole row out because God has been good to me and I've got to praise him. My upgrade is here. Not your neighbor say, neighbor, my upgrade is powerful enough for me and for you. I got enough for the whole section. My upgrade came for the whole church. That God, that God has a plan to upgrade you. Someone say upgrade. That means, watch. I'm eradicating excuses. I have no more excuses. That's my upgrade. Somebody say, no more excuses because my faith is being tested. They were being tested in the New Testament. They were being, there was a diaspora. They were being tested. They were being killed. They were being persecuted. They were being ostracized. Listen, you will be tested. You're in a chapter of your life, I hate to tell you this, where everything will be tested. To see if it's of God. Every, listen, listen. We have gone through a season of testing. I know who my real members are now, glory to God. Somebody ought to say, I'm a real one. I'm a real one. I don't, I don't just ride when everything's fine. I ride no matter how the ride is. When it's bumpy, I'm riding. When it's a rough turn, I'm riding. When you tell me to get off, I'm still. Somebody shout, I'm a rider, I'm a rider. I'm a, I'm a rider like that. I ride till the wheels fall off. Hey, none 
nothing worse than fickle folk. Fickle folk, fickle, fickle folks. Fickle folks will make something you say or did an excuse for them to not be who they are. How can I blame you for me not taking care of my children? How am I gonna blame your diet on me missing my meal? Come on now. So, so now your sin is a reason for me not to serve God. Because you did what you did last night. Now I got a reason to not give God the glory. Let me tell you, the devil is a liar. And if they sin it, let them sin, pray for them, and pray that God delivers them. But while they're sinning, you ought to be praying, you ought to be serving, you ought to be loving, you ought to be giving, you ought to be giving God the best you got because somebody needs what you got, no excuses. Somebody nudge your neighbor and say, no excuses. No excuses, no excuses, no excuses. Some of you have already been tested. <laughs> Some of you are on the other side of your test and you don't even know it. You're like, you're like Juneteenth believers. You've been set free and don't realize you're already free. You, you don't realize that God paid for everything you could ever think say or do and you don't believe and you don't understand that God has already put you in heavenly places where you're seated in Christ Jesus and you don't understand that God has already blessed you with every blessing in spiritual places. God has already done the work. All you got to do is receive it. Somebody shout, I receive it. No, I say it like you mean it. I receive it. Somebody shout, I receive my calling. No excuses. God, what you put on my life, I receive it. No excuses. My job is not an excuse. Me tired ain't an excuse. Me not being who I, no, no, no. My sin is no excuse. No excuse. But it was a lot of traffic. No excuses. So-and-so don't like me. No excuses but I'm not where I think I should be. No excuses. If you only understood what God had to do in my life to get me to do this. If you only understood that, 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 that why? Let me help you. You can be on parole and people trying to kill you and all they would have to do is a query. A quarry check, a simple quarry check will, will get you, but no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. And every time, the people that are trying is the same thing, the same thing. The people that are trying to cancel you will end up supporting you in the end. Be nice to them because you're going to need them to come back and not feel ashamed. No, 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 be nice to them. Be real nice to them. I'm going to say this. Here's your upgrade. Be nice to everybody. <laughs> I'm helping. I'm helping somebody. Be nice to everybody, especially the people who are not nice to you. And if you can't mess up and then come back to them and they have open arms, you don't need them. Because that's who you are. Your upgrade is, no matter what you do to me, God has given me grace to be who I am. And who I am is not contingent upon how you treat me. I've got to do this no matter how you treat me because I've been called and certified by God and God alone. Somebody better give God a praise up in here. Eradicate excuses. I'm about to turn home bait, home plate already. Listen, here it is, here it is, here it is. Emerge enhanced. No, 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 we ain't sitting down. We're not going back to regular, y'all. We out of here.
We gone. We going home to eat chicken in like 10 minutes. We gonna, I got to get y'all to church early. I'm going to start ending it at 15 past. Y'all think y'all can come up in here at 15 past? We still going to be in church. The devil is a lie. Because here's your upgrade. To be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be, and to be late is unacceptable. Somebody shout, my upgrade is to be early. No, no, no. If your upgrade is to be early, stand on your feet. My upgrade is to be early. My upgrade is to be early. My upgrade is... Somebody shout, I'm an early bird. Look at me. <laughs> I'm an early bird. For the first time in my life, it's a miracle. He's a miracle worker. God does miracles. Somebody shout, that's my upgrade. I'm early. The, uncross your fingers behind your back. <laughs> yeah, huh? I'm early. Break it. I break that curse off your life in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, I'm early. You know why your upgrade is you're early? Because you're an example. People are following your example. And you are too gifted, too called, and too anointed to be raggedy, dragging, and late. For where God's called you, you are early. Someone shout, I'm early. Ah, say it again. Look at your neighbor and say, congratulations, you're an early bird. You done caught the worm. I'm emerging enhanced. Everything in your life is enhanced. I want you to declare it right now. Everything that you believe God is upgrading in your life right now. I want you to go ahead and say, listen, it's loading. It's lo Oh, there it is. It's loading. Someone say, it's loading. Yeah, it's loading. My upgrade is being installed right now. It's loading. I had a season of glitches, but every glitch gave me an opportunity to get an upgrade. Hallelujah, glory to God. And my system is being updated right now. I dare you right now, in the name of Jesus, to go ahead and declare everything in your life that's being upgraded. Somebody say, my finances. I receive financial upgrades. Somebody say, I'm downloading my upgrade right now in the name of of Jesus. Somebody shout, it's happening now. No, 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 not tomorrow, today. I received my upgrade today. Everything in my life has been upgraded. Somebody say, my mind. My mind is being upgraded. Yeah, it's getting ready to happen. Somebody say, it's happening now. It's happening now. It's happening now. There's a thing that happens when you're getting a download is that it takes time. Perseverance is the time that it takes for you to download your upgrade. Somebody shout, my faith is being upgraded right now. No, 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 somebody say my faith. I'm gonna believe God for more than I have ever believed him for before in the name of, y'all ain't hearing me. All I need is one. I had one sister come in today. She's in my real estate master class. She said, I brought my first house. I said, glory to God. She got her upgrade. Can we celebrate her? If you ain't gonna celebrate yours, celebrate her. Somebody else is getting their upgrade too. You better give God glory. If you know you're in alignment, if you know you're in alignment, no, no, just give me a rumble, just a rumble. Not no, not no hit. If you know you're in line, and you're right now receiving your upgrade. I want you to stand to your feet and I need you to lift your hands, open your mouth and say upgrade! Nah, y'all ain't receiving. Let me hear you over here. One, two, three. Y'all ain't ready over here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Everybody on three. One, two, three. Come on and give God glory. Boom, boom. Come on and give God glory. Upgrade. Tell seven people congratulations. High five them. Tell them congratulations. Tell them congratulations. We there. It's over.
all right, just you, just you. Can you see it? Can you see yourself having peace in the eye of the storm? Can you see yourself speaking blessings in every direction, receiving blessings from every direction in the midst of chaos? Can you see it? Can you see yourself praising God through it all? Can you see yourself having enough peace and joy for everything connected to you? that when they're down, you're still up and you're giving God all the glory and you're not waiting for it to happen. It already happened on the inside. You're an explosion of gratitude. Can you feel it? It's an upgrade. They can say what they want to say and do what they want to do. It sounds cliche, but it's true. This joy I have. The world didn't give it. This peace I have. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Hey, you let them snuff your light out if you want to. Some of us are in the habit of snuffing out our own light. We don't even need any help. We just wake up with our light snuffed out. Your upgrade is this. You're going to wake up in the morning praising God like you are going out of your mind, realizing God has appointed you for this time. Somebody shout, this is my time. This is my opportunity. This is my upgrade. I'm fully upgraded. I am fully upgraded. You better receive that thing. Listen to me. Whenever God promotes you, whenever God promotes you, you never go back. Keep climbing. And remember, everyone will not be happy for you. The moment you leave here today, there are going to be a group of people who have not experienced what you've experienced. They don't have what you have and they're gonna try to drag you right back to where they found you the last time. But it's your job to take them from where they're trying to take you right over to where God has you because whatever can go where God's taking you does not deserve you. Somebody shout, I gotta have it. No, I'll say it like you mean it, I've got to have it. Say it. I've got to have it. Everything you've got for me, God, I want it. And I'm not talking about a job and a spouse and a dog and some kids. I ain't talking about no vacations. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about what God has for you. That's on the inside of you. That your job can't even bring out of you. Let me say this before I go. Never dummy yourself down to the degree that you try to please others who have not pleased God. I got to talk to a gentleman yesterday and I listened to him and, and all he could say was, oh yeah, my kids are doing good and this job and that and I'm saying, what about God? All, everybody's doing great. What about God? I ain't heard God in any of it. What, what about who he's called you to be? What good is it to sell your soul to a relationship or a job or a lifestyle and not be who God called you to be? 
You are somebody. Someone say, I'm someone. I'm someone. God made me someone. In him, I'm someone. Embrace who you are in Christ. Embrace who you are in the kingdom. Embrace your kingdom identity and stop dummying yourself down to the degree that you are unrecognizable in the world. How can you be this in the kingdom and that in the world? God's called your life to be at a point of consistency where everybody understands who you are. No one will be surprised because the moment you show up, they'll say, oh, there's something different about them. Who are you? Don't play lunch games with people. Quit playing sideways lunch games with people sitting at tables strategically knowing you planned it and you're playing yourself. Act like you know where you belong and set yourself apart because God has fearfully and wonderfully made you different. I hate to tell you this, but it's a very lonely place where God's taking you. I'd hate to tell you that John on the Isle of Patmos was lonely. I'd hate to tell you that Paul was in prison and he was lonely. I'd hate to tell you that when Peter was hanged upside down on a cross, he was lonely. I'd hate to tell you when Christ cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? He was lonely. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when he couldn't even get his disciples to pray, he was, he was lonely. I was on a trip last week with my ministry coach and we were talking. And, and we were talking and one of the things we were talking about is how very lonely it is to be called out by God. Very lonely. And you learn to appreciate the sanctity of a moment the solitude of a moment. And when people come into that space and interrupt it, and disturb it with their way and their words, and their thoughts that, and that haven't spent any time with God, you recognize it and you say, stop, and they get offended. This upgrade means your space is going to be clean. Your mental space will be cleaner than ever before and your personal space will be cleaner than your bedroom. Somebody give God the praise if you receive the word. If you receive it, come on, give God the glory. Glory, 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 glory.